What's going on, everyone? We are back here on another special edition of Sipe and Sean for TWSN. We're along, we're alongside Grayson McCall, the quarterback for Coastal Carolina. Grayson, first, how are you? How's the summer been? And uh, how's the summer workouts been uh, ahead of this upcoming season? I'm doing good, man. Everything's been good. Um, summer workouts were good. A little different for me this year, obviously, coming off surgery, a lot of rehab and things like that, trying to get myself back to where I was. But, um, you know, everything's been good. The uh, The younger guys have really came along, and we've seen some guys step up throughout camp. And, and you know, we definitely got some ball players again, so excited about the season. All right, so um, we'll dive right into this. And if you don't mind, I want to kind of like, I guess, go peel back to the beginning of, you know, you becoming the kind of college superstar you are today. But when you were in high school, you know, you were only a two-star recruit. 247 Sports has a few more schools, but I read an athletic article that said only Coastal Carolina and Army were your only two offers. What made Coastal Carolina kind of stand out for you to where that was the place you wanted to commit and really go to college? Yeah, well, first and foremost, you know, the coaching staff and the type of offense they run down here really intrigued me coming out. I ran a very similar offense in high school, so that was good. Um, and then on top of that, lo the location, you know, I grew up coming to Myrtle Beach on vacation, things like that. Um, I love this place, man. Uh, love love what they were building and and uh, all the guys around me coming in. So uh, it was pretty uh, it was pretty, uh, you know, relatively easy decision for me. I uh, had, had a couple of uh, other offers and things like that. But uh, as soon as I got the opportunity to come play here, I knew this was the spot for me. And being a two-star recruit, you know, we're in this age of social media where you, you, you have guys who are juniors or sophomores in high school. Their highlights are being posted everywhere. You, we All we hear about are these guys from the time they're like 14, 15 years old. Did you almost – did you feel any extra chip on your shoulder? Did you feel like you were being undervalued in the recruiting process in any way? I did, man. I think that's still why I, I have such a big chip on my shoulder to this day, you know, just remembering and, and you know, thinking about all those schools that recruited me and never really took the chance of me, you know. Uh, always, you know, kind of stayed with me. And that's why I play with that chip on my shoulder. Um, you know, coming out I, uh, of high school, I didn't throw the ball as much. I was a, you know, triple option quarterback. So, so you got to take that into the picture. And I, you know, I kind of understood that. But um, yeah, man, you know, I, I still carry with me that chip on my shoulder. And, um, you know, it definitely still pushes me to this day. And then obviously you retro your first season. I think like your stats say you threw four passes or so, but then you step into that starting role as a redshirt freshman, it's obviously a COVID year. So it was kind of just a unique year. I'm sure a unique summer experience. What was it like to be so young, to have to step into that role, to, I guess, be thrusted into the spotlight of a, of a growing program? Yeah, it was different, man. Um, I, I believe that, that my redshirt year definitely prepared me for it. Uh, I sat behind two older guys that, you know, that had been in the system for a while. So I think that definitely prepared me for it. But uh, like you said, it was the COVID year. Everything was different, you know, dealing with quarantine and things like that. Um, I was actually quarantined for 28 days at one point leading up to camp. So, you know, I really uh, took the time to dig into my playbook and and uh, learn things like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was tough. It was definitely different. But, you know, kind of just took it into my own hands and, uh, you know, how to talk to myself and really dug in and, and committed to this offense. And I, I knew I wanted to be the starter. I knew I could do it if I just put everything together. So, uh, definitely weird, man, but, you know, just taking all those extra days and the time I was quarantined and things like that and really just putting everything together and committing myself to what I knew I needed to do. You know, you won that starter role and you, know, you played well. Obviously, that entire season, not only you, but your entire team, your entire program, you know, one, one of the best teams in Coastal Carolina history, right? So, you know, that season that you had, you only lost one game. It was the final game of the year. You know, but you guys took the nation kind of by storm, right? Got a lot of attention, got into the rankings, you know, what was it like, you know, to experience that ride that entire season? It was surreal, man. You know, we were coming off two years where we were five and seven, uh, came up just just short in a lot of games. You know, we lost those seven games by a total of 24 points. So a lot of games we could have we could have won towards the end of the game. But, you know, they just kind of slipped out of our hands so that, you know, that was our emphasis going into that offseason. You know, we knew that that we could compete with every team in the league. We knew we were going to have a chance to, you know, get the win there at the end of the game. We just had to close out and. And, you know, so just the coaches being really strong and, and firm with our discipline and things like that. Um, our leadership was outstanding that year. Um, you know, a lot of those uh, fifth year guys that had been in the program a long time, they really were just tired of losing, man. And they, you know, they came together and they built a culture here that, you know, that's still in place. And they did a great job, man. Uh, kind of took me under their wing and, and just told me to go out there and play ball and have fun. And that's what I did, man. So, uh, you know, kudos to those seniors and obviously our coaching staff for bringing everyone together. And, and like you guys said, it was a really special year. 
Yeah, and, you know, we've continued to mention a few times. I know we're probably all sick and tired of talking about COVID and the pandemic. But, you know, that that season you know, brought a lot of unique things that happened, right? Which, of course, included, you know, Mormons versus mullets, right? The BYU game. You know, how did that game come, you know, from your perspective and, and that hype around it, right? Obviously, they had Zach Wilson. They had a very good team as well. And then you guys had the ability to host them. And it, it was a big game. So what was that game like? you know, from your perspective. Yeah, it was unbelievable, man. You know, definitely something I'll never forget. Um, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but we were supposed to uh, play Liberty that week. And uh, I think it was a Wednesday night. We found out they were dealing with some COVID complications. So they had to drop that game. They weren't going to be able to come play us. And then you start seeing things on Twitter, uh, you know, uh, Coastal Carolina BYU is trending all over Twitter. You see it and it's like, is it really a possibility? You don't know, but, you know, it's in the back of our head. And then we finally find out Thursday our coach brings us in. Is like They're like, you know, hey, we're going to play a game. You know, these guys from Utah, a pretty good team. BYU, you know, they got like the best quarterback in the country. They're going to come down here and play us. And uh, so, you know, it was really weird from a preparation standpoint. You know, didn't really have many days to prepare and dissect the film and things like that. So, uh, you know, we just kind of stuck to what we knew and what we were good at. And, you know, it was kind of big on big and, and made the best man or the best team win. So uh, unbelievable experience, man. Obviously, uh, the first time college game days ever uh, come to Coastal Carolina. So, very cool experience. Um, COVID year, so we didn't really get to pack the stadium out. They had uh, attendance limitations and things like that, man. But it was an unbelievable game. Obviously, defense played their butts off, um, limiting Zach Wilson in that high-powered offense. And, and um, you know, we, we did what we could on offense. Uh, our offensive line played a heck of a game. Um, you know, the running backs did great. We, uh, we really stuck with our run game. You know, I really didn't throw the ball as much as I would like to that game just because of the looks they were giving us. But – um, it was a battle, man. Definitely a game I'll never forget. And, uh, and uh, you know, just just a really surreal experience going up against Zach Wilson and that team. And I, I'm pretty sure they were 10th or 12th ranked in the country at the time. So us, you know, being able to pull that win off was really big for our program. And, you know, regardless of how much preparation you might have had, you know, you guys walked away with that victory. How much did that mean? And I know you touched on it a little bit right here, but how much did that mean? And again, not only for you, but that – your entire program. You mentioned how high BYU was in the rankings, of course, Wilson and, and everything like that. You mentioned, you know, college game day coming. It was a big game for Coastal Carolina. And obviously you guys came away with that victory. You know, what what did that mean for the program and really the success from thereafter? Yeah, man, it was huge. You know, uh, definitely a big confidence booster. You know, a after that game, it's kind of like, hey, man, no matter who comes in here, Power Five, you know, whoever they are coming in, big team, high ranking, it doesn't matter. Uh, if we play our brand of football, we have a great chance to win. And, and you know, that kind of just gave us that confidence and the motivation we needed to to go forward and finish out that season. And obviously that game still talked about uh, to the younger guys and stuff. You know, uh, I hound on it no matter. You know, we play our brand, brand of football. We play dis discipline football. We don't turn the ball over. Uh, we play our roles. Everyone does their job. You know, no matter who it's against, we have, a, uh, you know, a great chance to win the game. So, uh, like I said, a surreal night, man, uh, unbelievable win. And, and something that's definitely motivated us going forward. And then that win was obviously like one of the probably one of the most monumental moments in Coastal Carolina football. But you did mention that there's a stadium limitation. Only five thousand people were allowed to be there that day. When you look back at it, do you wish that stadium was fully packed? How would a fully packed stadium have have changed everything? Like, what would it have been like if you were able to pack that stadium with twenty thousand rabid loyal Coastal Carolina fans? Yeah, it would have been insane, man. You know, it, it's crazy to think about. There was only 5,000 in the stadium because that place was rocking that night. Uh, you would have thought it was packed out. Um, you know, there was people standing on the fence outside the stadium, probably five, six rows deep. Everyone's trying to get in there and, and watch the game, man. But I think, you know, we would have had even, uh, you know, that much more of an advantage if, if we could have packed it out. You know, our fans are great. They're loud. They're loyal. You know, in those tight games, they'll stick it out and, and hang out and, uh, you know, cheer us on the whole game no matter what the weather is, anything like that. So, uh, definitely advantage we have with our fans here at home. And, uh, you know, they really pack it out. And Teal Nation's been great. So, uh, you know, we're looking for another great year of those fans. So, look, going into next year, obviously it's your third year as a starting quarterback here. And, you know, the success speaks for itself from all conference nominations, hell, maybe even some potential All-American nominations coming your way in the future. Do you feel like you've proven all your doubters wrong? Oh, uh, you know, man, I, I'd, I'd like to say yes, but at the same time, I know that's that's just not possible. You know, no matter no matter who you are, if you're, you know, the best quarterback in the league, um, the best quarterback in the country, you know, you're going to have your 
your uh, your doubters, your haters. So, um, you know, at first for me, it was it was just proving myself right and and you know proving to myself that I could go out there and do it. Um, I knew all along I could do it. I just had to put all the tools and the work together and things like that. So, um, I know it's going to be another year of, of me proving the doubters wrong and things like that. Um, especially with the NFL draft buzz and things like that. Obviously, my every move, uh, you know, every play, every game is going to be critiqued and. You know, there, there's no there's no perfect prospect. So for me, it's just me focusing on myself, trying to get a little bit better every day and keeping the main thing, the main thing, man, going out there, having fun, playing football. Uh, what I've known my whole life, just got to stick to that, um, stick to my why, you know, why I do what I do every day and just let the rest take care of itself. You know, we talk about how big this year is for you. And, you know, I remember seeing, you know, the tweet and the buzz around when you announced that you were coming back to Coastal for another year. You know, even in this new age of the transfer portal, you know, a lot of quarterbacks move, you know, constantly, right? Did you ever consider transferring or was it always, hey, I'm here, I'm I'm at Coastal Carolina until until I'm done? Yeah, man, there was a little bit of consideration, not much, honestly. Um, you know, coming off last year, we were losing a lot of our guys. Um, oh, there was a lot of buzz going around, a lot of other schools that wanted me. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of scouts and things like that that are thinking, you know, he plays G5 in the Sun Belt of Coastal Carolina. You know, I'm thinking to myself, it may be beneficial for me to go somewhere else, uh, maybe a bigger program against better competition and kind of prove myself um, in, in that way. But really, it just came down to to what I know, man. You know, this school is is the place that gave me my first opportunity. Uh, I love it here, man. I've, uh, you know, when I came in here, I wanted to turn this place around and and I've done that. And, and we as a whole team have done that. But, you know, not quite done yet, man. I feel like my work's not done here, you know. Um, I started here. I want to finish here. I want to get my degree from here. Um, I love the guys around me, the coaching staff, what we've built and what we continue to build. So, uh, yeah, there was a slight consideration, man. But that's why I came out with that post to kind of shut it all down so I could focus on, you know, what I need to focus on. Yeah, you came out with that post and had a very memorable line at the end. Right. You know, uh, I, I pissed Teal. You know, where does that originate from? Yeah, so. uh I think it was uh, middle of the season, um, you know, just kind of hyped up after a big win. And I kind of threw that out on Twitter and, uh, you know, everyone was kind of confused about what does this guy mean by that? And, you know, that's just just a metaphor of me saying, you know, I'm truly built into this program and I live and breathe Coastal Carolina football. And so, you know, that was just a way for me to kind of throw that out there and uh, and show everyone how much this program really means to me. And obviously it kind of took off. So um, if you if you're a, a person listening to this podcast and you enjoy that, I just dropped a clothing line, a lot of shirts and hoodies that say I piss teal on them. So definitely check those out. So some good stuff over there. Love the plug. Love the plug right there. <laughs> we swear the plug wasn't planned, guys. <laughs> but uh, n- nonetheless, you know, you mentioned the NFL draft, bu- uh, the NFL draft buzz. But, you know, we talk about this upcoming QB class. Obviously, you're the name Stroud, Young, how Will Levis, Van Dyke. You know, I hear all these names and I feel like. For, you know, the total stats that you have, I think you've thrown six college interceptions. You've like over 50, I think like 54 touchdowns. Yeah, 54 touchdowns and six interceptions, but I have it right here. Do you feel like you're being under, once again, like underrated in the in that regard too? Uh, maybe some sense, man. You know, I feel like sometimes I don't get the respect that I deserve. But like I said, I play in the Sun Belt. Um, you know, I think it's very, uh, very competitive. Um, you know, a, a, a highly valued league, and you know, you, you you're gonna play a great team every week. And you know, we've got some bigger uh, bigger schools on the schedule this uh, this year with with Army and going down to Virginia towards the end of the season. So maybe a little bit, man. You know, I kind of uh, just let that take care of itself. I know there's some great quarterbacks coming out in this league, but if I'm focused on them, then I can't be my best version of myself. So um, I know there's some great guys coming out. They're gonna do they're gonna do their thing. They're gonna have great years. I'm sure they'll get drafted ahead of me which is fine. You know, I'm going to continue to have that chip on my shoulder. But for me, man, it's just focusing on me, uh, trying to get a little bit better every day and and uh, just continuing to grow, man. You know, I, I've uh, improved a lot since I've been here, but I feel like I've got a long ways to go. Uh, and I've still not not played my best football yet, so I know that's coming. So uh, excited for this year. You know, as time progresses and that we've been talking to you through these first, you know, 14, 15 minutes, it seems like you're very humble. You know, it's like, hey, you know, those guys might go ahead of me, but you know, I know what I can prove. Right. And, you know, it might be difficult for people sometimes to, you know, have that mindset right now. You, know, you continue to say it as as different questions come up. And it seems like that is truly how you believe, you know, no matter what, you know, I'm humble. I, I know what I can do. How how has that 
been for you? Like, how did you have you always been grown up that way? Like, hey, you know, I know once I get my opportunity, I'll prove myself. Or how have you always had that humble state of mind where, you know, you're here at this point and still answering questions like that as you know the NFL draft is coming up soon? Yeah, man, you know, I, I feel like I just kind of grew into it. Like like we touched on earlier, I was really under recruited coming out of high school. So, uh, you know, it's just something I've had to deal with, man. I, I've always known my value and known what I can do. Um, but just sticking to that, man, uh, always having that chip on my shoulder and, and just continuing to grow. I know that I've had a lot of success here at Coastal, but uh, I know the sky's the limit, man. I, I can I can watch a simple play and critique myself, and it really gets under my skin that, you know, maybe I'm not I'm not playing the way I, I know I'm capable of. So um, just me knowing that I have a lot of a lot of room to improve, man, and, and uh, a lot of room to grow, not only as a football player but as a person, uh, especially taking this next step. Um, hopefully this next year, maybe in a couple of years, whenever, whenever the opportunity arises, man. But yeah, it's just, you know, something that started throughout high school and, uh, you know, I've continued to grow into. So it's just the, I've kind of accepted the role at this point, you know, the, the underdog mentality, it's just kind of been with me and stuck with me my whole life. So, uh, you know, just kind of take, take the shots as they come and just keep rolling, man. I like so, it. so we're kind of here on the NFL draft topic. If I'm, so if you were scouting yourself, you know, let's just say you work for, any random team, you're sitting there, you're going, you're diving into your own film. What is your evaluation of Grayson McCall? Yeah, you know, obviously, like I said, um, you know, he plays in a, a lower conference in the G5, plays at Coastal Carolina. They kind of run a, a little bit of a weird offense, one that I would personally say I think translates well to the NFL, especially in today's today's type of football, dual threat quarterbacks and things like that. Um, but but ultimately, I would say, uh, you know, Grayson McCall is a true dual threat quarterback. Um you know, he can stand in the pocket and make the big time throws, the professional level throws. But, um, you know, when things break down and he needs to get out of the pocket and extend the plays, uh, he can do that as well. And then from, you know, a, a different standpoint of it, I think um, he's a great leader and he, and he brings the guys around him uh, up to up to that level he's playing at and just um, continue to help them out and bring them along and and things like that. So um, I would say um, he's got some things to work on. He's got, um, you know, some growing up to do before he gets to the next level. But. Um, I would say he's a good prospect coming out, man. True dual threat. Um, something that I think will translate well to the NFL. And um, so, so yeah, man, just just sticking on that. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, scout and team see the same thing in me and we'll, uh, we'll take the chance on me. Yeah, you talk about things that you might need to work on. So I have a two-part question. I'll start with yourself individually first. You know, what are some goals for you this upcoming season? And what are those things in particular that you need to work on to excel at the next level? Yeah, well, I had a lot of off-season goals leading in uh, to the season just because of the adversity that I've gone through this off-season with my shoulder surgery and things like that. So I'll start there. Um, preseason, one of my main goals was to, to be elected a captain. Um, I achieved that goal. My teammates selected me captain this year, so that was really big for me. Um, that's something I've always wanted to do, and, and so that was really big for me. Um, another thing in the off-season was putting on weight and, um, you know, continuing to grow that muscle and things like that. Um, that takes me into into my next part of putting in weight, putting on weight, and, and just trying to absorb those hits and stuff. You know, I played two full seasons here. Um, in 2020, I missed a game, and this past season, I, I missed two games because of injury. So one of my main goals this season is, is to stay healthy and and really show th these NFL teams that I'm th that I'm durable. So uh, me and and as well as my coaching staff, our main goal is to is to have me out there every game, to start every game, finish every game. So that's one of my main goals, and. Uh, you know, not I mean, everyone can say their goal is, you know, when, you know, player of the year, win championships, things like that. Um, for me, it's just just coming in every day, having that mindset of, of getting better, working and really leading these guys. And I know that if I take care of all that, take care of myself and, you know, the accolades and everything else will come along. Absolutely. And then the second part of that question, obviously, it does seem like you know, you're a team player. Right. So, you know, what are some of the goals for Coastal Carolina as a team um, coming from a newly elected captain? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's uh, it starts with our head coach, man. He does a great job with – we have uh, core values that, that we stand on. Um, the first one being competition. We want to come in every day and compete, and that's what we do. Um, you know, discipline, accountability, and passion, That's those are four core values that we, we live on and stand on every day. Um, you know, everyone's talking about all the players that we lost, and, uh, you know, the conference continues to grow. It's going to be even tougher this year with teams like, you know, Marshall, JMU, Southern Miss, those schools coming in. So for us, man, it's just being able to to compete in every game and, and have a chance to win there at the end. Um, we know we're capable of it. So for us, it's just 
proven to everyone else that these past two years weren't a fluke, that we're going to continue recruiting. We're going to continue getting the players in that we need to be successful um, in this league. So um, that's pretty much all it is, man. You know, just just continue to do what we do, um, what, what's got us to this point, um, and just continue to build on that, man. Obviously, um, we want to we want to have a chance to play for the Sun Belt Championship there at the end of the year. So we know if we we take care of uh, our in conference opponents and, and things like that, that'll be available. Um, you know, the opportunity will, will be available there at the end of the season. But but really, those um, you know those non conference games that we have, um, we got uh, obviously a really tough one starting out with with Army, and then uh, we got Buffalo, Virginia, um, schools like that. So. Really just taking care of those games first, you know, preparing week by week, um, just coming ready to play every week, man. Um, we've, we've already uh, throughout camp dealt with a lot of injuries, so it's going to be, you know, next man up mentality. Uh, we're younger, so, you know, for me, it's just bringing these guys along, man, and, and making sure they're ready to go each and every day. I agree. So we've covered pretty much everything football. So before, you know, we let you go, you now we got to ask, is there anything – or I guess is there something that everyone doesn't know about Grayson McCall the person, right? We we've seen you on the football field for two years now, about to be three. What's something you could share about yeah, your personality that maybe not too many people know about? Yeah, man. You know, I try to uh, try to keep things light, especially throughout camp and things like that. Uh, when the days get days get tough, I I try to you know be the light to everyone else, kind of you know crack jokes, uh, mess with the guys, just really build those relationships with the guys make sure that they know, um, you know, the opportunity that that we're getting each and every day is not guaranteed and to make sure we're not taking it for granted. So, um, you know, first and foremost, before I'm a football player, you know, uh, I'm a brother, I'm a teammate, um, you know, I'm a son, things like that. So I'm a family man. Um, you know, what I do each and every day is for my family, the name on the back of my jersey. So, you know, that's really important to me. And especially this year with these young guys, you know, just trying to keep it light, man, make sure everyone's having fun because – you know, everyone started playing this game because they love it. It's fun. So just trying to keep the main thing, the main thing, and, uh, you know, continue continue to motivate those guys and make sure we're out there having fun each and every day. Grayson, let's we appreciate you taking the time. Congratulations on being named a captain. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing to see uh, how your journey goes. So, listen, we really appreciate the time. And, uh, yeah, good luck this season. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, Grayson. Yes, sir.